Welcome to Last Vic Live. We have a very special episode for you tonight. We have a very special oh, episode. I'm look I'm checking myself. Okay, I think I sound okay. All right, great. Anthony says sound five out of five. <laughs> Welcome to Last Vic Live. We're trying to get to 500 followers, ladies and gentlemen. If you like this content, please follow, like, and share the show. Last Week Live is a variety comedy talk show where we invite comedians, artists, musicians, and the like to come chat with me about comedy and all things life. So come on in. Without further ado, we're going to introduce tonight's guest. So let's start the show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dana DeTrani to the show. Ooh, hello. What's going on, Dana? How are you? Thank you for having me. How are you? Thank you for joining us. And live, nonetheless. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm risky. Oh, I'm going <laughs> to bring up live. the old chat box to see if any chats come through. I didn't see any come through. So, of course, um, my chat box is probably not working. Anthony says, hey, Dana. Say hi, Anthony. Anthony joining the chat. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, gonna gonna have to see what's going on with that. We're always troubleshooting here on Lasvik Live, Dana. I so, troubleshooting. Welcome to the show for my little tiny audience that doesn't know you. Please introduce yourself. Who are you? Who am I? I, I often ask myself that question. <laughs> but for tonight, I'm Dana DeTrani. That's who I am always. Um, and I'm a comedian and I'm an actor. Right. And um, I like making people laugh. You enjoy the art of making people guffaw. Yes, yes. Which okay. I learned that from your last show, actually, that that's a belly laugh. That is a belly laugh. Of, I, I love <laughs> that laugh. That's, there's different types of laughs. Right? Mm -hmm. There's squeaky laughs and guffaws and snort laughs. Yep. A cackle, which I a have. A cackle. I love a good cackle. An evil, like an evil tone sometimes, you know that? Yes. There's an evil cackle. There's an actually a silly cackle. There's different types of cackles, Dana. Yes. But a befuckle. What'd you say? A, a... a, a guffaw. Did you just say a befuckle? I did. That's a different laugh that entirely. That might be a different genre <laughs> of laughter I'm not familiar with. Yes, totally. So, Dana, so tell me, how long have you been doing comedy? How'd you get into it? You know, I'm going to say, really, it sounds very trite, but, but in childhood. Child, I have been aware of comedy and stand-up comedy for my entire life. And uh, way back in the day, I remember watching Johnny Carson yes. and watching um, Seinfeld, um, David Brenner, like wow. Elaine yeah. Boozler. Like I'm going back. Do you know Elaine Boozler? Yes, Elaine Boozler. Um, she used to hang out with all the SNL people and Freddie Prince mm -hmm. back in the day. Yeah, she's a, she, she's a legend. She goes back. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I've just had an affinity my, my whole life, actually. So um, so I would say my whole life. Who um, uh, would say is like one of your inspirations, like one of your favorite comedians? Well, you know, back in the day, early on, women con comics were not, you know, common, you know. Uh -huh. And um, I, my first real love was um, uh, Lucille Ball hands down because she had the combination of the comedy acting and was the first woman that was kind of I wouldn't say foolish because she was so smart but she put herself out there yeah <laughs> yeah she was definitely a pioneer uh, in comedy yeah. for sure she was one of my favorites as well she's like a a comedic genius I mean every episode she would use one of the props or just her facial expressions and her timing was perfect. Timing was insane. Her timing Which, was insane. 
Yeah. And if you notice, I mean, I've watched the shows over and over and over. One of the things that is so brilliant to like the Vitamita Vegemin episode. Yes. If you, everybody knows it. If you watch it, she does it like five, six, seven times. And she does it different every time. There is a new something about what she's doing. And it's so brilliant to watch this process of slowly getting drunk on yeah. this stuff. It's so good. It's, it's hilarious. I wonder how many takes it took her or if she just did it in one or if she just improv that, you know, because yeah. it feels like it's just once, you know? Just once. And the writing on that show actually still holds up today. It's very clever if you, uh, the jokes still hold up. In my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Anthony calling out Judy Gold. Judy Gold's very funny. Comedian. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, we wouldn't Judy have Gold and Star I were on Trek a game without trip. Lucille Ball, Desi Lu Studios, actually. Yeah, Star Say Trek. Again? Wouldn't have got their shot if it wasn't for Desi Lu Studios, so. That is true. Well, Ricky was really very smart. He was also a pioneer of the um, uh, three camera. The three um, camera system. Yep. That's uh, yep. Desi Arnaz was responsible for that. Yes. Yeah. That's right. So, so it's really, uh, uh, it's very pioneering. And then she kept that studio for a while. She ran it. She ran, she ran the studio. studio for a long time. I mean, uh, Desi ran it. And then and there after shows... he couldn't, I think he got sick. And then yep. Lucille ran it and did a show at the same time. And brought shows that wouldn't have happened. I think she took a risk on, I want to say, dare I say Star Trek. I could be wrong, but there is a very... That's what we just mentioned, name. Star Trek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, that Trek. it wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for her. It, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So big shout out to that. <laughs> and this is my, uh, I drink out of an I Love Lucy mug. Every morning I drink my coffee out of it. Nice. You're serious right. about Lucy. I am like super serious. But to, yeah, uh, every morning. Wow. And I like your little setup you got back there, the underground comedy. Yes. Yes. Um, and you have a mannequin back there posing. I do. Uh, Yvonne. Yvonne. <laughs> Yvonne. She doesn't talk much, but she uh, she likes when I bounce my jokes off of her. <laughs> okay. Yvonne in the house. We got the little underground comedy, right? Because you said you set up this little space for yourself in your basement. In the basement. Yes. Yes. We all have a little space. My husband has a music room. He's in a band. Uh -huh. In fact, he is the Ricky to my Lucy because he there you plays go. in a band. So you guys should start a sitcom. <laughs> so <laughs> Throw your hat in the ring. See what happens. Yeah. <laughs> I don't so, know if he wants me to sing in his band. Anyway. So how long have you been doing comedy, Dana? You know, I've been doing it a long time. I've done it in New York. I've done it in Los Angeles. And now I've been doing it um, all in kind of the Hudson Valley area, and it's been awesome. And it's been, you know, it's 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 a hard thing to do in general. I almost, it's amazing that we all do it, but it takes a lot of balls. It does. <laughs> it takes a lot of big brass balls to get on stage. Claude Wig joining the show. What's going on, my man? Welcome. Our chat is on the fritz, but I see you there. Saying yo with many O's in there. Claude Wig, of course, a regular of Lasvik Live. We appreciate him. Um, so uh, any particular memory, Dana, that sticks out for you as a comedian that you've experienced, good or bad, that sticks out for you? You know, I've experienced both. And, and I think you have to experience both. You know what I mean? And there's no higher high than hitting it and everybody getting you and you know hitting and that wave lap. yeah and everyone like no matter it's awesome like it's just really fantastic it's sometimes no you gotta wait high. for it you know you gotta wait for the wave yeah yeah well but we people understand your vibe and where you're going and they you know uh and when they don't it's the uh, it's exactly the opposite <laughs> Yes, it comes to a grinding halt. Absolutely. That, and that's the ups and downs of being a comedian, right? That's part of it. It is, but fighting through that is... You're is... fighting through the breakers. Yeah. You're getting sharks <laughs> off your back. 
<laughs> you gotta swim out far. Yes, it's like, okay, are there people are alive. You're out, out there, there all alone, just all waiting alone. for a wave. Waiting for the you know rescue boat to come. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's just yes. Uh, but it's still fascinating to um, you know share your innermost thoughts with total strangers. <laughs> totally, yes. Absolutely. In fact, I'd rather share them with total strangers than people I know. Like, I feel I can open up more. So you like, feel you comfortable know. on stage, right? You feel like you can. And I feel like that too, Dana. I feel like when I'm on, on stage, I feel very comfortable. Like, I can share anything. When I'm off the stage having conversations at the bar, mm -hmm. I'm more uncomfortable at the bar. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, yeah. I don't know what to say. Yeah. But when I'm, I'm up there, party. it's fine. I, if I'm at a party and I'm talking to people and maybe I don't know them well or whatever, and I don't want to give them like inner information, right? I don't want to be that personal, let's say. But when I'm on stage and I'm talking to a complete total yeah. stranger audience, I, I, I open up more. <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah, it's, I understand. And even like, so for you, is there a difference between a big audience and a small audience? Like, does your comedy change if there's 10 people in, as opposed to 100? You know, I think it brings different elements. But I remember I had this teacher and he said, you have to do comedy anywhere for anybody at any time kind of thing. Yeah. Like, just kind of always be prepared. And uh, so I think it, 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 it breeds different things, you know. Um, the intimate setting's kind of nice, um, and I don't know, I haven't, uh, done like, you know, thousand people, you know, audiences, yeah. but, um, uh, but it all, I think it all brings a different vibe and especially like with lighting, you know, when you're on stage, people True. think you can see everybody cause they can see you. Yes. But you can't. And that throws me off sometimes. Yeah. And one of the lessons that I learned is that you're up there and you have the spotlight so they can see every tiny detail so if you raise your yeah. eyebrows yeah. they can see that you know yes so getting back to what your question was like a great memory or like uh, equal bad i think it's important to acknowledge what's going on on stage like mm -hmm. i remember one time I've done it more than once you know i messed up my own joke well they know that you messed up right so i acknowledge that i messed up my own joke let me try that again and you know people like that yeah, because they're aware of what happens and it kind of brings you on another level. And, and it's uh, I think that's uh, really kind of fun, actually. Uh, doing it's an opportunity, like right? Every setting, every situation is could For me, it's an opportunity, right? So it doesn't matter whether it's big or small. Yeah, it's, you a, find it's the a great opportunity, opportunity in there. Yeah. Uh, you know? And it's an experience like, you know, you've been uh, you have a really great bit about uh, Action Park, which is Awesome. If you saw the documentary, it's called Class Action Park, right? right? Hysterical. Um, it, but you. it's a memory that you bring back for people, right? That, you know, uh, they also have a memory too, you know? Yeah. Uh, and a lot of people, like, it's different when people bring into their personal world so personally. Like, everyone, a lot of people think their lives are funny. And, yeah. and uh, so talking about the observational comedy versus the personal comedy is also different, you know? Tammy, what's going on? Joins the show. My chat isn't working on screen, Tammy, but I see you there. She says, oh my God, hi, and like 10 hearts. <laughs> hi, Tammy, you caught the show. Anthony says, hey, Tammy. Anthony says, I talk to everyone. Yes, we know, Anthony, that you talk to everyone. Hey, Tammy. I would say, hey, Tammy. Hey, Tammy. How are you? Tammy, of course, is a huge comedy supporter, and we thank her and awesome. her boyfriend, Mike, for coming out. To, she's such a great supporter, Dana. She's always coming out to shows. She awesome. loves comedy. She loves to laugh. It's a great positive thing because after so many years, you could be bitter in this business. You know what I mean? Like, you could just go bitter. So it's so nice to go out and see friends and, you know, see familiar faces. Because, let's face it, doing comedy, it could be a lonely endeavor, right? You go out yes. and you do comedy for, you know, 50, 100 people, and then, boom, it's over. And then you go to a diner by yourself and 
drink coffee. <laughs> But you're on a high. But you have a but high. But you're on a high and you're ready to do like 10 more shows. And exactly. you gotta wait a week, right? <laughs> Tammy but says, you can so glad to see you both. Hello, Dana, she says. Hello, Tammy. <laughs> so, Tammy is a student of comedy. She wishes to get on the stage soon. So let's hope we make that happen soon and she gets to an open mic. Rhino has a great open mic. Saturday nights. I've been to many. You've been to many. You've hosted them. It's, yep. It's open mics are great. They're plentiful. You can get on stage tomorrow if you want. You've it hosted the regular day. show at at Rhino as well. Dana is a regular yes. comedian at, at Rhino Comedy Club. An awesome place. So really she's always doing her thing. And do you have anything coming up, Dana? I do. I've got uh, Rhino uh, September 15th, in fact, actually. Um, and then I have, uh, uh, well, the uh, Tales, the Divorce Show. Tales of um, people in divorce and relationships. Okay, and that's, that's, coming a good, up that's a good theme. At, um, Tommy Fox's uh, the 12th, uh, September 12th. Nice. That is a good thing because everyone has that, right? So I think topical shows are, are kind of cool yeah. because everyone comes in and they know you're going to talk about a topic. Exactly. A lot of people can relate to that. Tammy says supporting comedy is essential. My last on stage was with Vic DiBattetto two weeks ago. Oh, awesome. He's funny. Yeah, I saw he was at Uncle Vinny's. I was down in Point Pleasant this weekend. Oh, okay, cool. Beautiful beach trip, by the way. So Tammy performed with him? Tammy, did you go see the show? Uh, Anthony says Bergenfield, Tommy Foxes. Yeah. Okay. I do. I, have I been there? I don't even know. Tommy Foxes. Yeah. We do. Uh, 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 Chip does the comedy downstairs, and then there's bands upstairs. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, it's a cool place. In fact, my husband's band is going to play there, um, and then I'll be there. Both of us will be there. Yep. What's the name of your husband's band? His band is uh, Parkway South. Okay, cool. Shout out to Parkway South. I love that. Parkway South, yeah. I love the New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> I love New Jersey bands. Let me just, I'm a huge fan of New Jersey. In college, I would go see New Jersey bands, drink. Oh, cool. It was a great time. Support They're your local this artists. Yeah. You have to, to you have to support. The chat here. Sorry, go ahead, Dana. Everybody, the performers need support. Everybody has to support everybody. Yeah, and it's, you know, look at what's happening now with the writers and actors strike and all that stuff. Yeah. We have to yeah. support each other now more than ever. We do. And you can't come up with new content, right? Because it's not allowed. It's not allowed to work for any major studio right now. Indie films, I believe, are still allowed. Not Non-union content is allowed. But nothing for the studios. Yeah, I mean it makes it makes sense. I'm a I'm a Screen Actors Guild member, and I'm proud of that. There you go. I used to be, but I didn't. I I don't think I paid the fee. That was it. I got kicked okay. Out. You could just still pay it, and yeah. but. But as um, I said, anyway. Dana, this weekend I was at the beach. I was at the Jersey Shore, one of my favorite places in the world. Is it? Which shore? Point Pleasant. I mean, I like all different points up and down the Jersey Shore, but this time I went to Point Pleasant because I like Jenkins. I like the the cheesesteak sandwich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, like, like it's it. clean there. It's peaceful. Yeah. And and that brings us to our first news story. Cops search <laughs> for a woman who allegedly hit child with ski ball at Jersey Shore Arcade. Hmm. Which shore did that happen? Probably where I was at, very close. <laughs> Police are searching for a woman who allegedly hit a child when she threw a ski ball at a group of people at a Jersey Shore arcade. Dude, do you know how heavy a ski ball is? Yeah, it could, it could, it could do some damage. I mean, that, so it was on that purpose. could smack a kid right in the head. Yes, it certainly could. And knock someone down. I think Tony down. was hit by a ski ball as a child. Isn't that right, Tony? <laughs> But was she, she wasn't playing the game and it wasn't a missed shot? Uh, I think it happened at Cape May. Cape May Police Department police a surveillance video. Oh, is this the video? 
Oh, we gotta we gotta look at the video. It's really tiny on your screens, but yes, it sure is. This is really for my own benefit. <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting because we trust people playing skee ball because right? you trust people. Balls with those are big, just heavy right balls. there. We just trust that they're going to go right back in the machine. Um, Tammy says, yes, she was in the act with Vic at the Stress Factory. Oh, we cool. We closed the show. We did improv. Really, Tammy? He spoke while I put my hands through his arms. Oh, I, he bought you on stage and did like a, a hands act. That's amazing, dude. That's when awesome. was this? This weekend? Anthony's demanding I fix the chat. He's very upset. Uh, Tammy was in SAG, too. I'm trying to keep up with the chat here, Dana. Sorry. Yeah, no. Uh, so that's awesome, Tammy. So, yeah, so this woman threw, you know, so how long before they take the ski balls away from us is my question, Dana. Yeah, I know. And I like that game. I tell you, I'm very competitive. I see it. You, you like know, ski I mean, ball. You're you're good at it. You win prizes. I like ski ball. I do. Uh, you don't cheat, it, Dana. You don't run up there and stick it in the hundred. No, slot. it's all about the thrust of the wrist. There's a th there's a little thrust of the you wrist. You have like a you wrist gotta... thing that you do. Yes, that's okay. the secret. What's your favorite Jersey Shore arcade game? Let us know in the chat. <laughs> Well, my phone of, is asking me if my phone is talking to me. That's so freaky when your AI goes off. When it, does that what happen? are you doing? Why is she talking to me? What do you think of AI, Dana? What do you think of all that uh, stuff? You know, I don't know what to think. That's all you're hearing. All I hear now, like there's a few punch words I'm hearing all the time. There, uh, I'm hearing um, AI all the time. I'm hearing indictment all over the place. Like yeah. everyone, that's that word is just everyone's having an indictment. And I'm hearing uh, what's the other word that I'm hearing? Um, there's another word. I'll think of it in a second. Uh, AI indictment and resilience. I hear that okay. word all the time. That's weird. So what do I think of AI? Um, I don't know what to think of it because people are using it. I don't know how to use it. I don't know how it's going to interplay with my life, but it seems like it's taking over like a movie. I don't know <laughs> what to think. It's taking over everything. <laughs> I don't know where my place is with it. I don't I don't I don't know what to That's the big question. We don't know where our place is with AI. Tammy says AI is scary as shit. <laughs> She says, uh, also, hmm, wristing heavy balls practice makes perfect. Mm. Um, you know, it stands yeah, AI for is scary shit. It is, it is in our lives all of a sudden, right? 2023. It's yeah. like we went from the pandemic to now robots are going to take over everything soon. Right, it's artificial you know put it intelligence. Into robots. It's artificial intelligence. I would like to trust my intelligence over, <laughs> I feel. But at the I same time, I'm ready for AI to take over our government. Oh, yeah. I would yo. trust AI I'm, over I'm the down politicians. With down with that. But that's just my opinion. Like, if you put like a roulette wheel on the internet and that's how we voted, I would be down. I think people are afraid to really say what they want, like, in a way, like, Truthfully, truthfully, everyone just needs to cop to the idea. There's not ever going to be one person that we agree upon that could run the country. But you know why? Because that person doesn't exist. <laughs> True that. True that. So maybe to, we need AI. We do need AI. Speaking of AI, how to get your hands on French's limited edition mustard Skittles. Mm. Would you? Yeah. <laughs> Would Not, you eat this, Dana? Um, you know, it's like the jelly bellies that uh, that taste like all different weird things. Yeah, the, like that, a jelly bean, I guess. Skittles is like it's is, not supposed to be together. It's a yeah. It's a, a mustard. Anybody out there in the chat would eat mustard. Tammy says FML. Hey, <laughs> I cannot write jokes. Anthony says. And he says, no way, he would not eat this. Just in time for National Mustard Day, August 5th, which passed like a week ago. French's Mustard is, has launched a collaboration. 
with Skittles. Mustard's probably not even in it. It's probably just weird flavors to make the flavor of mustard. And it's not probably made with mustard. Would you put even... this on a hot dog? Uh, a little little Skittles across the hot dog? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Across the top of a hot dog? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's kind of weird, like, because it doesn't go together. Like, I feel that way about the McRib. Yeah, the it's... McRib is so Mc... nasty. Oh, my God. Oh, my the God. Mc... I just got PSD. D or whatever it's called from you saying that the McRib the McRib had a vein in it. I remember the but McRib had like a vein, molded, but what? it was molded to look like bones, and it, it was hard. Were... Hard. <laughs> oh my God, Dana. Tammy says, uh, "What's next, tuna skittles?" <laughs> that would be a good idea, tuna skittles. She says, "Gross." Foot scented Skittles. <laughs> um, yeah, the McRib, Dana. Wow. I remember yeah. biting into one and I felt a vein. That's like, I've never had one, but it, it just seemed bizarre that it, it w looked like a Fred Flintstone plate. Like you ate it all. You ate the bones and the meat <laughs> and bread. Tammy says, Mick FML. <laughs> what does that mean? Retro Rewind, of course, you know I'm a Gen X, Dana, so I have to do these stories. Retro Rewind, 14 best campy movies from the 80s and 90s. Now, chat, what is your favorite 80s, 90s campy movie? We have a list here. We're about to There's go through it. There's a ton. It. There's a ton. They all were, as it turns out. Dana, do you have a favorite <laughs> 80s, 90s movie? Well, I've seen what you're seeing, so I see Sharon Stone. So, yeah, so right from the get, you got to go Basic Instinct because... Uh, it just was, and it, when you, you break it down, it's completely ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> but back then, we were all enthralled, weren't we? Well, there were some things to be enthralled about, actually, and I think Sharon Stone rocks always. I'm a big fan of hers. I think she's a really great example of just a strong woman. She was in Casino, as you know. And That's right. I, we watched that movie over and over, and really, she fucked everything up in that movie. Uh, <laughs> she really did. <laughs> and she was never in love with him. So I don't know why he tried. Like, you know. That's a great movie, really... Casino. That's right. Great uh, movie. Tammy but when you break says, it down. Weird Science. Anthony says, Meatballs. Meatballs. Um, we got number one, The Beastmaster. Was this the one he talked to all the animals? Yeah, I think that's the one where he talked to all the animals. Yeah. Starship Troopers. Eh, that was late 90s. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Patrick Swayze had, uh, had a few. Big Trouble Little China. I mean, that's... As far as campy 80 movies goes, this is top of the heap I, right here. I don't think I've ever seen that movie. Tammy says, I'm not a lesbian, but she's a hot bitch. Love her. Talking about Sharon Stone. <laughs> She is. She really is. And I'm with Tammy a thousand percent. You haven't seen Big Trouble Little China, Dana? No. I've seen Big China Little Trouble. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't know. It might be too late for you to watch it. Lady Hawk. Do I remember Lady Hawk? No. I don't know. Anybody remember what about... Lady Hawk? Labyrinth. Um... Remember this one? Such freaky movies in the 80s right like this would give kids nightmares well the um music gives it away like the 80s music you know yeah. uh uh what do you call it just uh, you know um pretty in pink it was just on the other i actually put it on it was on and i was doing something I'm like you know what pretty in pink it is classic yeah <laughs> the james music spader really plays yeah, those yeah. roles yeah back then the music was really more intertwined with the movies i don't i don't know if that's that true now you know like yeah, did, I, did avengers have a big hit song i'm an avenger <laughs> no they didn't no but the uh, 80s music like you know it right away right it was tied yeah. to the movie even yeah, the music the video you would see like the movie characters or clips of the movie in the music videos mm -hmm. you know they don't do that anymore you don't do that anymore. There's no like 
Like, I can't think of 90s music and what that music, like, if I hear 80s music, I'm like, oh, my God, that's an 80s music. I could tell you the scene of a movie. And if you can it, get you it. Know. Yeah, you, you already see Sylvester Stallone on his motorcycle riding yeah, yeah. through <laughs> empty Philadelphia. You can already, <laughs> use, and you hear the beats of the drums. Yeah. The yeah, the beats. first try of the stairs. <laughs> Anthony says War Games. Tammy says Chucky. Chucky was great. What a great movie Chucky was. Nightmare on Elm Street. Jason gave me nightmares. Total Recall. A classic. Yeah. Queen. Did you see uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's um, documentary? I've been Netflix? watching it. I'm on episode three. It's good. It's really good. I feel I'm like I've done nothing with my life. I know. I know. I just, I'm like. It's that I good. <laughs> it's that and he's very candid he's like he's like i did i could take any movie part i was already a millionaire i'm like what? yeah yeah and he didn't even go into that like i owned real estate before he's like, he's i like, came whoa, to whoa, this whoa. country i became a millionaire in like two seconds <laughs> then i conquered lifting <laughs> what? I kept what winning am i and doing winning what did i winning? do with my life I know, I know. It's just, and then I wanted to decide to, uh, you know, uh, be governor. So sure, <laughs> be sure, governor. Sure, why not? <laughs> then I decided to go into outer space, <laughs> conquer the aliens. <laughs> Auntie says Batman. Tammy says Arnold is pretty hot too. Damn, Tammy, you're on fire tonight. God, God bless him. Twelve Monkeys. This movie gave me a headache. <laughs> the Matrix. <laughs> Love the Matrix. RoboCop. That's a classic. Terminator and Terminator 2. I mean, the story behind Terminator in that Arnold documentary thing is amazing. Yeah, unbelievable. Uh, he's, James uh, Cameron's like, you should be the Terminator. I will not be the Terminator. Yeah, then he's like, you know, I couldn't speak English, so I learned English. You know, it's just like, all right. There was nothing. I couldn't fly, couldn't so do. I learned to fly. <laughs> It's like, there's nothing this man can't do. Nothing. So uh, I'm more impressed with him than ever. Remember um, Legend? 1985 with Tom Cruise. Oh, Risky Business. Is that is that considered campy? Yeah, it's I still can, good. Sometimes you just got to say, F it. And that's true. That still holds true. You know what? It's a good movie. I mean, back then, I don't know if it was because I was younger but movies would inspire me. Like, I would be all pumped up. That seemed doable. Like, like, yeah. Like, I wanted to immediately go to the subway after watching Risky Business. Yeah. And Her just see if I can't find the hot blonde. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But you take the pimp out of the picture, and there's almost no story. You know? <laughs> Uh, Tammy says, great impersonation of Arnold. Last, thank you. Get to the chopper. Explorers. Oh, Explorer was a good one. Um, he He's like Tom Cruise, but older. You like Tom Cruise as well? Yeah, Legend is a great movie. Remember the devil comes out? What's that guy's name yeah, that played the legend. devil? I forgot. Oh, my God. He's in Clue. Remember Clue? I know the game Clue. I didn't see the, the movie, movie Clue. Clue. Dana, come on. You have to have seen Clue. Really? All right. We're going to have to movies make a list for you. That's what I'm learning. can't be movies you need to watch ASAP. <laughs> I know. I could, like, I, I'm learning. I don't know enough about 80s uh, campy movies. Back movie to the Future, of category. course, the fifth element. Actually. Yeah, that's a must, uh, Dana. Yeah, it's a must. I did enjoy the Barbie mu movie, though. I will. Uh, have I you seen the that. new Barbie movie? Yes, uh, I was equally as uh, fascinated with Barbie as I was with Lucy. Oh, Such wow. Such a dichotomy. Okay. As a kid? Uh, yeah, sure. Oh, as an adult. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. As an adult, you're, you're fascinated with Barbie. So what's your yeah. verdict on the Barbie movie? Oh, I, I, I dug the whole fascination, the whole fantasy thing the, the color the pink how you think life would be i thought um uh, ryan gosling was phenomenal stole the show okay everybody's saying that oh he was so good he was so funny he was so like how do you do ken 
how do you act like Ken? And and he did it. <laughs> wow. All right. I got to watch this movie. So what yeah. do you give it uh, out of a 10 rating? One 10, out of 10. 10 plus. 10 plus. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. I'd see it again. Wow. It's Weird. that this, this thing made like a billion dollars already. Yeah. God bless. Right. I mean, so they keep breaking records. Like the record can always be broken every time yeah. they're like, you know, now this movie made a billion well, I mean, dollars. As long as and... inflation keeps going up. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I guess that's true. Yeah, it's different back then. Like, what was a hit? Back then, movies cost half a penny. <laughs> right, right, walked right. in. Half yeah. a nickel to the picture but houses. Now they have, yeah, but now they have AI, so that's going to make it easier. Then all of a sudden, they added sound, and they had to increase the price. Yes. Tammy yes. says Tom can fly fighter planes. Tammy's really hung up on these actors tonight. Tom Cruise? Tom, yeah, she's still talking about Tom. She went from Arnold to Tom. I hated right. dolls, but loved Barbie's clothing and house. So basically, you ripped the clothes, you took her out of the house, you threw her out, you kept all her shit. All right. I got a t shirt that says Latina Barbie. Cool. Anthony yeah, coming Cruise in with Titanic look. still holds the record. Of, of, uh, biggest, I, I don't know. Uh, Titanic must hold some record. You know what Titanic holds the record of, Dana? Being that two cassette VHS combo <laughs> that didn't fit anywhere in your house, but someone gave it to you for Christmas, but now you know, don't know where to put it and you can't put it anywhere. Yeah. And, and also, how many times do you have to watch that movie? And who wants to switch the VHS tape in the middle of the sinking? Right. You know what I mean? Like, you're all in it, and then you got to switch the tape. Yeah. <laughs> then you see, yeah. But then you, if someone gives it as a gift, that means you have to watch it over and over. Like, you Who does that? I, I, everyone I got to see the Titanic, Titanic as a gift again. back then. And my mom's was still in the plastic. Like, it was just enshrined in plastic. <laughs> Try to re-gift it. She could re-gift that. Yeah. <laughs> Give it to somebody now. Here, I got you a, a VHS of uh, the Titanic. Exactly. I think you'll like it. Who's got a VHS, the combo pack of the Titanic out there? I do have a VHS that I have, actually. And it's hooked up to my TV down in, here in my studio. Uh, and I have it hooked up because I have so much comedy on VHS, believe it or not. Oh, really? In a day. Yeah. Yeah. So you I still have, have a VCR? Yeah, just so I could watch it. Because then nice. you have to transfer it. and I don't. Yeah, know. that's awesome. I still have a VHS collection. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you know, you know, we're Gen X because we still have VHS collections. It's going to come back. You watch. Everything does. I'm going to open up my VHS repair store. Are you kidding? <laughs> I think that's a good idea. And you could sell those... Uh, Mustard Skittles along with it. There you go. <laughs> Speaking of which, the last story of the evening, Dana. Linear TV viewing drops below 50% of U.S. television usage. For first time, streaming hits record highs. So basically, traditional cable is dead and long live streaming. What do you think? I... What do you think about this whole streaming well, landscape? Well, that's the whole strike, right? Yes. So... Back Thank to you, kind Dana. of that. It all comes full and, circle. But you know what? Can you plan for everything? You can't, right? So back in the day, we just talked about VHS. Well, that was, you know, cutting edge at one point, you know? <laughs> yes, it was. So beta Max we, and then VHS. Oh, the beta. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You had to yep. pick a winner back then. Which one I'm going with? You know, because they were like $300. DVD. Yes. And it's DVD, right? But and now then, everything is cable. streaming. Yep. So people aren't going out and buying the Titanic dual combo VHS. They're just paying $20 a month, $15 a month for streaming. When well, do you no. think, what do you think happens to the quality of entertainment when you're just having subscription services? There's no, no one's buying records or cassette tapes. Or going to the movies mm. as much anymore. Barbie being the exception. 
yeah. because everyone is streaming. But it was also like summer blockbuster. We don't have that anymore, really, since yeah, pandemic. Yeah, we have very few. So it used to be the summer was the blockbuster, you know. Yeah. We used to have, have 50 that. comedies a year. Now we have like two. Yeah, and then you can see it on Netflix if you wait a little while. Yeah, and then so everybody waits to watch it on streaming. No one can pay anybody. Everyone's on strike. You know, because yes. when you have nothing but streaming, you don't have money coming in to create new content. Yeah. So what and do you do? About... You use all the money and you don't pay anybody, but you use the money to create the content. It's crazy. Right. And then a AI wants to multiply, like, you know, just take your image and just use it again and again. Exactly. So AI is coming in and I predict a future, Dana, where the actors are... AI people. The actors aren't real people. They're just yes. AI. Like, like it's it's making actors obsolete. Yes. And real I feel people like actors. The celebrities of the future are going to be like voice talent that represent the AI or the hologram in front of them. You'll never see their <laughs> face, but you'll know their voice. <laughs> you know. Yeah. There's not enough. I, I remember. You know. I've. I've. Uh, been in a situation where I was able to get residuals and I will tell you it's 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 people would always laugh because they would send residual check I have friends that got like one penny in a residual check just yeah and they cost cost more to send it right um and then other times you would get residual and you never really knew when they were coming because sometimes you didn't know and going to the mailbox was a joy um but <laughs> yes, that it was it was exciting <laughs> Ooh. Talent partners. <laughs> That's funny. Um, anyway, uh, so that is all, you know, going away. But you can't possibly, everything's changing. The only constant is change. So it's hard to just keep up with everything. Yeah, it's hard to keep up with it. So who knows? In five years from now, we may have AI celebrities that don't exist. Tammy says Mike's shirt says Ken in Barbie lettering. Um, Tammy says yes, and a dusty double pack. I sold mine on email. How much did you get? I want to get a VHS CD player combo, she says. Those were fantastic. Oh, the DVD VHS Yeah, thing? remember those? Those were like, you were I think I have one. one I think I have one somewhere. Actually. Anthony forgot Ghostbusters. Uh, and uh, welcome, everyone who, who's watching. I'm here with Dana DeTrani, comedian extraordinaire, comedian actress, artist. Uh, we've been sure. chatting tonight about life and comedy and mustard Skittles and <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger. If you haven't seen that new documentary, go See watch it. it. It's amazing. So impressive. <laughs> I feel like I've done nothing with my life. With that yeah. said, Dana, we're going to wind down the show. I want to thank you so much for being here with us tonight. We went over, way over, because we've been having a we great conversation. Thing that happens. Thank so, you so much. And I want to thank everyone that joined us tonight in the chat. Claude Wig and Anthony and Tammy and, and everybody else watching out there. So, Dana, where can people find you if they want I'm to find Dana you? I'm at Dana D Comedy. Dana D Comedy on Instagram. Dana and, D Comedy on Instagram, okay. Yep, I'm. Uh, I'll be at Rhino on the fifteenth of September. I got Rhino Tommy Comedy Club fifteenth of September. Yeah, Tommy Fox's. I think the twelfth. I want to say I should. Tommy know. Fox's. Okay, I need to go to this place. Tom, where is it at? Tommy Fox's. You should. You should. They have. Um, uh, yeah, upstairs, downstairs. They have food. What? You know? I've never been to this Tommy. I'm in a, living in a different dimension. I got to tell you. <laughs> a lot of places it's a lot of places but i've had a great time and i really thank appreciate you. being here so, thank you for yes, having me thank you for the show for is awesome us. actually people are saying great show anthony says hey again dana great show laz um sorry i caught you late are you kidding you caught me just in time thank you to everyone we will be doing Woo. more of these episodes as often as we can once again check out dana detrani and her comedy I want to thank her for joining us on Las Vic Live, and we will see you next time on Las Vic Live.